Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, elections for NDSU student body president and vice president is heating up. International students got a chance to share their culture during International Week. And the national champion Bison are back on the field. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News, I'm Ryan Borstelman. And I'm Taryn Smith. Tragedy has struck the University of North Dakota. A UND student was found dead in a Grand Forks rail yard earlier this week. Officials say that the student appears to have been struck and killed by a train and took a shortcut through the yard. Fargo Man was also struck and injured by a train on Wednesday evening. The country is abuzz with election season fever and NDSU is no exception. The campus is filled with signs promoting candidates for the student body, president, and vice president. With elections scheduled to be held next week, each team is pushing its own agenda. Presidential candidate Luke Brodeur and running mate Jace Beeler developed the LEAD platform, standing for learning, engaging, advocating, and developing. The campaign hopes to outline attainable goals, including fixing the state funding model during the legislative session. One of our biggest strengths of our platform, um, we're aware that it's a really aggressive platform, but we've spent the past three months researching these things and talking to administrators and making sure that we can accomplish everything that we've set forward. Um, it would be irresponsible of us to do something that we didn't think we could actually do. Presidential candidate Mike Paolini and running mate Sidney Hull's student-focused platform involves leadership involvement and quality. The duo hopes to improve a number of areas off campus, including the quality of many programs and the transparency of student government. Um, for most of my life, I've seen myself as a public servant, always helping others. And in the, my current position as the Executive Commissioner of Academic and Student Affairs, um, that's what I do, is helping students. Um, I, I help students almost every day. I sit on committees. I provide the student perspective. You know, I love my job. I'm very passionate about it. I'm very ambitious. Campaigning will continue through early next week, and voting begins April 3rd and 4th. The longtime executive director of the Alumni Associ Association and the NDSU Development Foundation has announced his intention to retire. Jim Miller, who has held the position for 30 years, will be retiring on June 30th, 2013. During his remaining 15 months, Miller hopes to continue with his ongoing projects, including the trading room in Barry Hall and the funding for the Bison Competitive Edge campaign. Under Miller's leadership, the Development Foundation increased its student scholarship endowment from $1.4 million to over $100 million. Financial assistance to so many students, you can't even count them. And, and they'll be providing student, uh, scholarships for students yet to come well into the future. So I feel very good about that. Well, it isn't every day that you can trade that odd cup in your cupboard for a handmade ceramic one. The head of the Visual Arts Department at NDSU has developed the Misfit Cup Liberation Project, where he trades works of art for cups with stories behind them. SUTV News a reporter Aaron Berner has more. In NDSU's Renaissance Hall, Michael Strand can be found working to help the community in a unique way. They all drink from the same cup. The artist has created 100 ceramic cups and traded 99 of them in exchange for a misfit cup with a story to tell. What started off was maybe an interest in bad design or something um, like a plastic martini glass. Um, it really became about the stories that are connected to these objects. And um, so I'm really interested in that. And I'm interested in, in the history behind that object. I'm interested in um, why is that cabinet? Why is that? What's the story? When did you get that? And why is that part of your life? And the project provoked some interesting reactions. That really became a cathartic experience for a lot of people. Um, they're writing things on there that I don't think they would have been comfortable telling somebody. Some stories more emotional than others. Word kind of got around about the cup. Um, in essence, this was a cup that he had in prison and then three years outside of prison. And immediately it formed this sort of network of kind of warmth around him and I think was really in a uh, sort of transformative moment. Strand has big plans to keep his project going strong. Uh, where I will travel this to 10 different locations globally. And the idea is that um, this becomes um, maybe an alchemist level anthropological survey, right, of, of what's at the back of our cabinets. And the Misfit Cup Liberation Project can be admired at the Plains Art Museum in downtown Fargo. This is Aaron Berner reporting, SU TV News. 
Strand intends to take the project to 10 other cities around the globe. More of his work, organizations, and presentations can be found on his website at www.michaeljstrand.com. Now, something interesting about this project is that he's keeping, of the 99 cups that he gave away, he actually kept one, the 100th cup, as his own, as, as a kind of a representation of the project. Yeah, and I heard by the end of it all, he plans to say or have made a thousand cups. A thousand cups is very impressive. Yeah, very impressive. The university hosts a variety of programs for International Week. We'll tell you how NDSU honored its different cultures after this. class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons of Matt bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be Matt bus strong. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Steps up, throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Not at the two. Good start. Riser. SUTV News is being brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Back, this is SUTV News. NDSU students from all over the world are getting an opportunity to share their culture this week. The Office of International Programs is hosting their annual International Week. The week gives students from other countries the chance to celebrate who they are and where they came from. The week is filled with different events, including an expo for students to set up booths representing their home country. There was also a parade of nations and a seminar regarding employment opportunities and challenges after college. Events will conclude Friday night with a variety show at the Festival Concert Hall. The show will begin at 7 p.m. and tickets will be at $5. The Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute at NDSU will soon have new leadership. North Dakota State University Provost Bruce Rayford has announced that Denver Tolliver will be the new director. Tolliver, who is replacing the current interim director, has been with the Institute since 1980. Tolliver has, Dr. Tolliver has served as associate director since 2003. He will begin his new position on April 2nd. The commodity training room in Barry Hall is nearing completion. The project will consist of 32 workstations, 16 of which will have access to live commodity and financial market information. Additional workstations will be added in the future. The installation of equipment will take place in June and will be available for use next fall. NDSU students now have the chance to study abroad in Transylvania in a new two-week study abroad program this summer. The program titled Transylvania Beyond Dracula takes place May 26 to June 10th and will give students the opportunity to learn more about Transylvania's culture, history, and society. Throughout the two weeks, students will be attending lectures and participating in a series of workshops including pottery, paint stained glass icons, and learning how to make Romanian meals. The application deadline is March 31st. Well, the, trans uh, the Transylvania program is an interesting one because it's not one that you normally think of when you think of study abroad. Yeah, you're right. And the activities that they get to participate in sound like 
it will be very enjoyable. And there is there's quite a lot of uh, a lot of culture out there, a lot of interesting culture to, to be seen. Yeah, it'll be a great experience. Coming up, the Bison men strutted their stuff in a competition earlier this week. We'll show you some of their finest after a look at this week's campus calendar. <laughs> College is the time to explore career opportunities and cultivate networking skills. Online social networking websites, such as LinkedIn, make this easier than ever. With LinkedIn, you can network with other professionals, search and apply for jobs, and strategically market yourself to potential employers. So let's talk tech. As a specific type of social networking, LinkedIn is dedicated to connecting professionals from a variety of career fields. No matter your major, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool that college students can use to jumpstart their professional careers. To sign up with LinkedIn, all you need is your name and an email address. From there, you can choose from several options to create a personal profile showcasing your previous work experience and education. LinkedIn also gives you the ability to upload your resume for potential employers to view. You can also use critical information from your resume to fill out the key elements of your LinkedIn profile. Next, you can begin building a network of people you know or would like to connect with. These can include co-workers, supervisors, classmates, and potential employers. Find these contacts by searching for their name and or email address and click the Add to My Network link on their profile page. For the soon-to-be graduates interested in finding a job, LinkedIn also offers a job search function that connects you with your dream employers. Some job postings will even give you the opportunity to apply directly through LinkedIn. The LinkedIn Job Search is also a great tool current students can use to explore the job market and research employer expectations. With over 100 million users, LinkedIn is the world's largest online professional network. So create a free account today and jumpstart your career. Welcome back to SU TV News. The women of Alpha Gamma Delta hosted the 18th annual Mr. NDSU. 20 men from NDSU showcased their bison wear, their ability to dance and lip sync, and their formal wear. The participants showed the judges why they should be America's next top bison. The top 10 contestants made it to the finals. <laughs> is Dane Johansson. All proceeds from the event will go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Women's Week at NDSU highlights the two local influential women. The Memorial Union Art Gallery is showing a historic costume collection about Kate Wilder and Ruth Haggart. Both women were suffragettes and had a large impact on Fargo's history. The display includes two paintings, original dresses, photographs, and a hat. I think those are, you know, fabulous leadership models for everybody, but especially for women of their time. Certainly it was fairly controversial then and manages to be sort of controversial still. The exhibit will be on display through the end of the month. NDSU's Office of Publication Services and the Office of Distance and Continuing Education has won it big at the annual Addy Awards. The competition was made up of nearly 400 entries across North Dakota. Areas of competition and advertising were print, TV, radio, and interactive. The Gold Addy Award winners will move on to a district competition where they will compete against all other local winners from South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Winners have a chance to go on to a national competition. Next week, people can lace up and walk for a cause. The American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association is inviting people to take steps toward a healthy heart by walking. 
The week will feature several events, including a one to two mile walk starting at the NDSU Wellman Wellness Center, National Walking Day, and a run fi 5K run or walk at the Shields Arena. For more information on events, visit www.startwalkingnow.org. NDSU students have been lucky this year. With the lack of runoff from snow, the Red River hasn't experienced any flooding. Sidewalk Stampede set out to recollect flood-fighting memories from the pa years past. So, flood of 2009, uh, we had to uh, sandbag my neighborhood. We were up until 4 in the morning for three nights straight sandbagging. We had to get to Fargo to fly out of Hector International Airport and Ever, I felt like every road was closed between my hometown of Ada and Fargo. Sandbagging and just went all over the town and helped out whoever we could. All the students at Century High School and Bismarck High School too, we just got together, got on the buses and headed to the Civic Center and we did what we could. Football players usually were the ones throwing the bags. Uh, well, my softball team as a community service project, we came up to Fargo and we got hooked up with a sandbagging organization I guess you could say and we sandbagged for about four hours. My hometown is like a block from the river so we went over and helped sandbag with some friends. You know I have to agree we have gotten very lucky with this year with no flood whatsoever. Yeah, I remember back in 2009 when I was a freshman I did 24 hours of sandbagging in three days. I was just worn out. Yeah, well, I've never gotten to experience sandbagging yet, so. In this freshman year, we did get two full weeks off of school on top of spring break, which I've been missing. But they, they crammed it all in. When we come back, a closer look at spring football right after this. on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons to map bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be map bus strong. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. SUTV Sports is being brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. The national champion Bison football team has finally put the pads back on. Wednesday marked the first practice of the season in full pads. The Bison will be returning a lot of their power players on offense, including quarterback Brock Jensen, running back Sam O'Jury, and wide receiver Ryan Smith. 
New defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman will also be returning a lot of key players, including Marcus Williams, Colton Heagle, and national champion MVP Travis Beck. The one area Bison will really need to focus on is the kicking game. We weren't able to have Adam Keller uh, kick today, and that was disappointing. He pulled his hamstring at the tail end of winter conditioning. Uh, ben LeCompte did a nice job uh, punting. He's still a little bit inconsistent. And Mike Murphy had been our snapper, and I think it's good to get him back out here. The Bison will compete in the annual Green and Gold game Saturday, April 21st. The season officially starts September 1st against Robert Morris. Well, the spring weather has only recently made its way to Fargo, but the NDSU Bison baseball team has been hard at work practicing and winning games in the South for over a month. SUTV's Matt Murtis has more on the story. It's warm weather and sun one day and frigid cold and indoor practices the next. This is a transition that the NDSU Bison baseball team knows all too well. Uh, I've been here four years and I kind of got used to it. You know, it's one of those things where you're on the road in nice weather and you come back home and you're just used to being here for two days in the snow in here and get on a bus again and leave. It's something you get used to after the first year, but uh, it's definitely a transition and stuff right away. Being limited to indoor practice at home and 28 straight road games puts the team at a slight disadvantage, but that doesn't hold the team back for long. We only use it as an excuse for so long because now we've played three series, you know, we got under our belt and now, you know, practice, you know, just shuffling up, so it's not like we're missing a whole lot. This season has had a relatively good start, defeating nationally ranked Arizona, which is a first for the program since it became Division I. You know, getting a quality win like that was something to show that we put our program on the map for a change. And it was something to signify us, but it was only just the beginning of what I think we can do down the road here. Every year since I've been here, we've increased our win totals and, and made the playoffs for the first time last year. And we're, we're hoping to build off of that and not only be in, back in the playoffs with a better seed, but also uh, hopefully win in that tournament at the end of the year. With winter wrapping up, it won't be long until the Bison are playing on their own turf here at Newman Outdoor Stadium. Their first home game is scheduled for April 10th. This is Matt Murtis reporting for SU TV News. The baseball team is currently on an eight-game winning streak and will be playing UND this Friday in Grand Forks before a doubleheader at home on Saturday. Their series against Valley City State has been moved up one week and will start on April 3rd. Bison softball has started conference play undefeated. After a three-game sweep of Oakland last weekend, the team will come home being 6-0 in the Summit League. NDSU will show what they are made of in the next two weeks, facing their two toughest opponents to date. Softball will take an eight-game winning streak, including shutouts in five of their last seven, into this homestand. To hockey now, and Easter weekend, the Gophers will battle number one Boston College in the Frozen Four semifinals. In last week's NCAA Regional, Minnesota beat UND 5-2 to advance to their first final since 2005. The Gophers' BC game is set for Thursday, April 5th at 8 p.m. The other Frozen Four matchup is Ferris State taking on Union College of New York. The national championship game will be played Saturday night at 7 p.m. in Tampa, Florida. Continuing on with the championship season, the final four have been decided. After a lot of upsets and only one number one seed left, our sports crew took a look at how we think the final four will turn out. As you can see, all four of us have Kentucky winning in semi-close games, and most of us have Ohio winning the other semifinal. The semifinals will be played on March 31st at 6.09 and 8.49 p.m., with the national championship being played at 9 p.m. on April 2nd. Well, a lot of people think that these final four teams are an upset, but if you look back in the history, these four colleges have all made at least nine final fours in their histories. And you guys are riding strong in Kentucky, I see. I would have picked Kansas myself, but I mean, if you guys want to put all your eggs in the one basket, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, my bracket was done the first round. With two number two seeds losing to two 15 seeds, that was a first, so most people's brackets were... Done after that. It's been a crazy year. Well, drums are beating at the Bison Sports Arena this weekend. We'll tell you more about the powwow that was held right after this. Steps up, throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Not at the two. Good start for Bison.
Jimmy John's? Who ordered Jimmy John's? Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Welcome back to SUTV News. The Bison Sports Arena was host to the 23rd annual Woodlands and High Plains Traditional Pow Wow. The theme was Walk with a Purpose. Head dancers were Thomas Bluestone, a member of, a, of three affiliated tribes in North Dakota, and Kelsey Peltier, a member of Turtle Mountain Tribe. Bluestone and Peltier are both NDSU students. Performing were the Buffalo River Drum Group from Fargo. Others involved came from the White Earth Tribe in Minnesota and the Sisseton Wapiton Sioux Tribe. Pow Wow was sponsored by NDSU, Concordia College, MSUM, and Minnesota State Col Community and Technical College. It was good to see NDSU students in the Fargo-Moorhead community and then in communities around the, the area getting involved with this. Yeah, I know that's an event that is very well sponsored or supported. Well, this weekend we're looking at some beautiful weather, sunny, warm, great weather to go out and get your first look at Bison Baseball and Bison Softball, both teams at home on Saturday. So fans should get out there and get a taste of that baseball and softball. It's about season. time after this rainy weather this week in the, the mid-50s. I'm looking forward to seeing 70 again. And, and it is nice to see the baseball team and softball teams home finally after those long away games streaks in the beginning of the year. 24 and 33 games straight on the road. It, it's going to be nice to see them at home. Yes, it will. Well, thank you for watching SUTV News. Don't forget to pick up your copy of the Spectrum. We leave you with video from this weekend's Pow Wow. Have a good Easter break. We'll see you in two weeks.